something to drink? <laughs> <laughs> No, so uh, Rob asked me to say like a uh, small bottle. Huh? So first I didn't know what exactly to say. But then I was thinking like maybe it's a good thing to say to tell something about like uh, getting married, you know, like since we're getting married like in a year. At least uh, it's not soon, but okay. So I want to tell you like what's, uh, what's the secret about being like having a good marriage. <laughs> So, okay, honestly, I don't know, like, I mean, I, I <laughs> like, but uh, from Judaism, there is, uh, we can learn some stuff about what's been a uh, good marriage, like, uh, if I recite this correctly, it's written in Parsha Bereshit, it's written, it's written right after the creation of the of men and the women, it's, it's written like, Al-Kel Yazov Ishe Tavir Beimov, Medavak Beishto, Bayul Basar Echad, which means, translated in English, means, Therefore, a man shall leave his uh, father and mother, and then uh, and to cleave uh, his wife, and uh, they shall be like uh, one single body. Another thing what we can learn from Judaism, another uh, idea about it, what's a good marriage, is like, uh, it's the following. Like, in, we know in Judaism there is like this theory about that every word has uh, some particular number, so it's called gematria. So if we play this game and then we realize like there's this word called bait, which means home, which can stand for a good marriage. It's written in Hebrew has the letter Beit, Yud, and Tav, which is at the value of uh, 412. If you take the word of Isha, which is uh, written in Aleph, Shin, and Hey, this has the value of 306. So the difference is 106. So, but if we remember the sentence which I said just before, the word Davak, the cleave, which is written in Dalet, Beit, and Kuf, is exactly 106. So what do we learn about it? So what we learn from both theories is like uh, the secret of being in a good marriage is to cleave to uh, his wife. But what does it mean to cleave his wife? Like there's a good example also from, uh, from the Bible, from the Torah, the story namely from Ruth. Because about Ruth we know like, uh, that it was, people said that she was cleaved to her mother-in-law, Naomi. And uh, a good sentence which she said once to uh, Naomi was, uh, or see the correct like, like uh, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Wherever uh, your people are my people, your God is my God. And wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. So I think this sentence is uh, learns us like what does it mean to be like uh, good marriage. It's like you have to respect each other, love each other, and to try like to uh, go a good way together and. Uh, yeah, be good together. And I will try uh, my best to be uh, a good husband, and hopefully I will be like uh, <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Also, give a blessing on behalf of all of us here, friends and family, for both you guys, Chas and Kala. Maybe even share with you some uh, words of wisdom from our Holy Torah as well when you when you embark on this uh, this new journey in life. Talking about buying, building a house together. You spoke earlier about the idea that marriage is called an everlasting edifice. You build a house, a Jewish home, and it's everlasting because it has in it um, not just the components of the two of you, but Hashem is the infinite partner as well to give it that infinite and everlasting quality. But when it talks about building a house, one of the most telltale signs of a Jewish home is when you walk in the door, you see a mezuzah on the door. We all know how the mezuzah is supposed to be. It's not straight up, it's kind of leaning in a little bit. But that leaning in, you don't realize, is really a powerful lesson in, in, in Jewish home. Which is like this, because there's an actual argument in the Mishnah about which way the mezuzah is supposed to be. One opinion, Beis Shammai says the mezuzah is supposed to be horizontal, and Beis Hillel says the mezuzah is supposed to be vertical. And instead of one opinion being the correct opinion, and one being the incorrect opinion, which is often the case, where we just say, okay, you, we're not going to follow your opinion, and we're going to go with this. Over here, we see the perfect example of what has to be in the Jewish home, is a compromise where we say we're going to have it leaning at 45 degree angle. The truth is, nowadays, we don't have enough room. Most door jams are not 45 degrees. <laughs> wide enough for them. This is going to be leaning 45 degrees. So it's like we're giving a little bit more to Hillel's opinion, the vertical opinion anyways. <laughs> but the idea is still the same. 
And it's a powerful lesson for both of you. We talk also another point about building a Jewish home, and this, is, I think, is the most crucial part. And over Shabbos and earlier, we and all your friends here, we were fabraying a little bit, and we are talking about how special this occasion is. And we were discussing what is it so special about Oreo and Annie that makes it such a special uh, occasion. And it reminds me what the Balshanta says, when you, when you have a house and you look for an apartment, whether it's in the Upper West Side, or the Lower East Side, or the Upper East, and you're with too much rent, with a studio, with a, a junior one bedroom, whatever it is you're looking for over there. Balshanta says you should find a lifting place, a place with light, not just natural light, physical light, there's, root, there's light coming in from the windows, you're not in some basement or some elevator shaft uh, apartment, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but also the spiritual life. And this is the consensus among your friends were when we were talking about you behind and in front of your back. <laughs> that when each of you walk in the room, not even together, just on your own, you bring that quality to the room, it's much more bright and light. In fact, we were here earlier and it was the, the lighting was very dark, and all of a sudden, like we're here and the two of you together, and it's very bright in here all of a sudden. So, there you go. Anyways, I want to wish you guys miles to tell. We're going to the, the, the Kenyan now. Let me find this uh, the idea of giving you a word. So, there's a verbal word and there's a word in action. And in Judaism, we have this idea called a, a acquisition that we do to formalize any kind of uh, agreement. We can either do this in a contractual form, we actually write it down, or we just do what's called a kinyan. So we're going to ask for some witnesses again. Uh, uh, yeah. He's relative. He's relative. Uh, no, no, but no. family. Come. Very common. Family can have a. No family, no family. No family. Family's not kosher witnesses. Okay, who else are we going to have? We're going to have Tzvi. Tzvi, Connie will be another witness, okay? We're going to come and witness this to make sure that Ariel is going to take this and acquire it by lifting it up, saying it's mine, without saying it, you just lift it up. What should I do? Just you just lift it up. <laughs> That's it. And now we're going to go all the way over to the ladies section over here. And you guys are going to witness again. We're going to have Ariel do the same thing. And just lift it up. And now we're going to conclude with the most dramatic part of the ceremony by having the two mother-in-laws, or two mothers, I brought this chair a minute. We're going to have the guys come and check this out. I'm sorry for that. Where is Aiden's mom? Okay. Just right on the back of the chair. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Watch your fingers, though, okay? okay? Nice and hard, so you really do it. Are you scared? <laughs> All right. One, two, Mazatov, 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 Mazat